says, uh, welcome to Afghanistan. So let's start off a little broad. What is the best part and the worst part about having your story adapted to screen? Oh, geez. Um, start with a hard one, will ya? Uh, you know, the best part is, is I think it'll bring more people to the book and more people to the real story behind this movie. And I think it's a pretty entertaining, fun movie, but also sad in parts. And I think that people will really like it. So hopefully more people will read the book and maybe we'll start talking a little bit more about Afghanistan because that would ultimately be the great thing to come out of this is more attention to, to that part of the world from the American public. Um, that's probably the, the best thing. And then the worst thing would be, uh, you know, it's like I'm a, I'm a truth teller and I'm also a behind, behind the scenes print journalist. And now I'm the, you know, there's this, my name is like Kim Baker in the movie and I'm a TV journalist and it's all about me and you know it's it's weird it's weird for me because the reason I told the book in this way and made myself the main character was because I I, I needed to make it funny and you can either make it funny by making fun of people or yourself so I make fun of myself obviously Afghans and Pakistanis have had kind of, of enough of, of people making fun of them and, uh, you know, I, it's just, it's weird. It's, it's just weird. The whole thing is weird. I could go on about how weird it is, you know, for minutes. I'm always hyper concerned about being politically correct and not offending anyone. So how exactly do you balance the comedy and the content here with that in mind? Like, is that something you have to constantly remind yourself of? Uh, sure. I try to be respectful, but things pop out of my mouth all the time that it turns out are offensive, you know, and but sometimes funny, and I just can't, I've never really worried about it too much. I mean, some people are gonna see the movie, and they're gonna read the book, and they're not gonna like me, because I don't fit their mold of what a woman should be, or what a woman should aspire to do. Fine, don't like me. You know, if I learned one thing about being overseas and, and covering conflict over there, it's learning how to be very comfortable with myself and knowing who I am. Don't like me. Don't like the movie. I don't care, but I think it's pretty great. I need to adopt that mentality a little more. How about the smaller things about your experience? Because, like, I'm the kind of person who watches a movie about, I don't know, like a zombie apocalypse, and I'm looking at the survivors being like, how do they brush their teeth? So, oh, like, sure. What are the little things that you missed while you were over there and that you didn't realize that you missed as much when you got back? Oh, the little things. Um, I was going to pick apart things in the movies. The little things I missed. You know, when I went over there, I just, like, you know... I never was a, this is going to sound totally ridiculous, I never was a big bacon eater, you know, and it's like, I, bacon was totally fine. I get that. I, you know, I could take or leave the bacon, I might go with a salad on the side, you know, but you're living in Afghanistan for a time or Pakistan for a time, and you start missing the things that you can't have, and of course you're not going to get bacon over there, because it's Islamic countries. And, um, and they don't really have good bacon in India either, that's not a bacon country either, so mm -hmm. it'd be like... You'd come out, out like for home leave or whatever, or go out of the country, and you'd be like, I would like a plate of bacon with a side of bacon. And, you know, you'd be like, I'm going to get a salad with bacon on the side. And it was just like with every meal and some bacon. And, and now, you know, I can't quite kick the bacon habit. You well, know? you know, bar bacon is kind of right around the corner from I know, there. I you know, I know. I've been shot. there. I've been there. <laughs> what would you tell someone who came up to you after seeing this movie and said, I want to be a war reporter now? Uh, be careful. I mean, here's the thing. This movie shows a very specific point in time in Afghanistan. It shows, like I think, between 2003 and 2006. And that's different than Afghanistan is now. Afghanistan is a much, much, much more grim place. It's much more dangerous. And um, things have gotten really bad for Afghans as you know the Western troops are pulling out and as, and as people are no longer paying attention, not that they had paid attention in a very long time. So this movie is a specific point in time. And you look at what's happened in Syria with journalists or in Libya with journalists, um, and the fact that, like, the job that I had back then no longer exists, right? The Chicago Tribune does not have a South Asia bureau chief anymore. So you've got, you know, the newspapers and these sort of staff, very highly supported foreign correspondent jobs are just rapidly going away. In their place, you have freelancers, young people who are very hungry, who want to go over there, and they want to do it on the cheap, and they don't have a support network, and they want to get good stories and important stories because it's part of making a name for yourself. But they, they don't have the resources. And I think that we've gotten into really d dangerous situations with that in recent years. So... Um, you know, I'd tell somebody, be careful, right? I'd say, you know, pick your country carefully. Don't go to Syria. Don't go to Libya. Pick something that maybe is a little less kinetic and it's a really good story, but there are not a lot of journalists there telling that story. And then go for it. Leap first. Think later. One, two, three, they're gonna run back.